As for scarves, absolutely. While Mars isn't exactly a fashion runway, good old Martian fashion... Are there, are there any beaches? Like, should I bring a swimsuit? Ah, the allure of Martian beaches. While our... Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about this live kit, which is a real-time cloud to build voice and video applications. We will particularly explore the agent's overview, which allows you to talk with language models in a real-time with a real-time voice interface. They are uh, actually a really powerful solution. They actually powered the ChatGPT app. Uh, it says that it uses LiveKit network at both ends. So it seems like a powerful uh, platform to build uh, voice and video applications. So if you actually go to their GitHub, you'll see that they have uh, so many interesting repositories to actually build voice and real-time voice and video applications using WebRTC. But like I said, we're going to be exploring the uh, agent stuff, which allows you to have two-way voice chat uh, with interruptions. We will be demoing it. Uh, as, as you can see, it actually uses what's called a VAD uh, voice activity detector. It uses DeepGram for speech to text, and uh, it can use OpenAI for text to speech, or it can also use 11 labs. We'll talk about both. We also provide a simple Next.js application upon which you can build. Maybe I'll start with a demo. We can see how this is working, and then uh, we can just dive into the code. By the way, uh, we're going to go over the tutorial and see how we can install all the requirements and uh, all, the, all the necessary uh, parts to this process. But uh, if you didn't want to go through all that and just want to download the code files for 11 Labs, OpenAI, and also the Next.js app, it will be freely available at my Patreon. The link will be in the description. While you're there, check out my other 250 projects as well. So we start the application by typing Python, name of the file, and then start. And this will start our server, and this will actually communicate with our API key. I believe the project which we have set up uh, on the live kids end, uh, and this automatically connects and everything. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. But once we have the server running, we can also launch the Next.js app and connect it to it like that. But we are actually going to use their uh, playground, Agents Playground. And when I go here, you can see that my LiveKit cloud it automatically takes this project, which I've set up called Test, which is uh, here. I'll show you. It is the key that I've generated, which this key test comes with an API key plus uh, a WebSocket. URL, I believe, which you input to your variables. We're going to talk about all of that, but when we are uh, here at the agent's playground, we connect the test, and we are connecting to actually our code. You'll see code will... Hello, how can I help you? And now we can talk to it. I muted my microphone here, but I'm going to unmute and just have a conversation. This is actually set up. Uh, is a customer service agent for a newly found colony on Mars. So let's see how this goes. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects. As a patron, you will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I, what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. Let me unmute. Hey, so how is the weather there? Should I bring some scarves or something like that? Greetings, Earthling Adventurer. Both the Martian sunrises and sunsets are the winners here every single day. Trust me, nothing on Earth quite compares to the soft pinks and blues of a Martian sky. As for scarves, absolutely. While Mars isn't exactly a fashion runway, good old Martian fashion... Are there, are there any beaches? Like, should I bring a swimsuit? Ah, the allure of Martian beaches. While our red planet doesn't boast sandy shores or blue oceans just yet, we've got our version of natural wonders. Picture this, vast... Well, how, much, how much are the... Tickets there, the flight. 
Ah, the golden question of interplanetary travel. Ticket pricing to Mars can vary depending on the amenities and travel package you choose. Our basic explorer pack. It's connected, as you can see. It's very smooth. It's uh, almost as smooth as Hume AI, maybe even better at times and sometimes worse, but it works very well. And it's very easy to set up. It's, it just has a, quite a lot of steps, but other than that, it's not a difficult process at all. So let's see what we're talking about. When you're at their website, so you can go to their documentation and then click on agents and then the AI quick, uh, agents quick start. So prerequisite is like it cloud project, as I have shown you. You don't have to sign up, and I believe that it's 50 gigabytes free, so you don't have to really spend any money with LiveKit. And once you once you have once you have a uh, API key and everything that you got from your settings, you're going to input it into your environment variables. Uh, you also need an 11 Labs API key and a DeepGram API key, and DeepGram is also also gives you $200 in free credit, so you don't really have to worry about that. And an OpenAI API key and Python. You do have to set up your API keys like this, the LiveKit URL, the WebSocket connection that it's going to give you when you set up your LiveKit uh, API key. Put the API key, the Live script, LiveKit API secret. You put all these three into your environment variables. Then your 11 API key. But I did try with 11 API key. It ends up being very expensive. And what we just tested is with OpenAI API key. Honestly, I will provide both the code here. The difference is the TTS is set to 11 labs or to OpenAI. You just have to do this extra step with, with the stream adapter, but this is just so much more cheaper, although it may not be as natural. It, it just, I think it's, it's, it's a no brainer. Anyway, though, if you have an 11 Labs API key, just set them up like this in your environment variables, then create a, a virtual environment. I use Conda. And now you need to install these LiveKit packages. I have included them uh, here. And then once you've installed these, and uh, once you once you once you also have your script, uh, okay, once your script is ready, you do you do run this command. Python, whatever your file name is. So I just put it here, main.py, but it's actually the name of the file. Okay, I should do that. And then this, and then uh, call download. So this is the command that you run on your terminal. So it will download the necessary files. For example, the Celero BAD voice activity detector, which we are defining here, comes with a, I believe, model which detects user, user. So it's, it's just trying to detect if you're trying to interrupt. So for example, that, that type of stuff gets downloaded automatically when you run this command. It's, it's actually in the, in the tutorial as well. So you just pretty much copy this code. This automatically uses 11 labs, but I modified it to use OpenAI. And then see, it, it asks you to run this command to download the necessary files. And now you can start it like that. This is the name of your file. And that is how we started it and uh, tested it a little bit ago. And at that, at that point, you can go to Agents Playground and connect to it, just as we have. So when you go to have, you already would have made a live kit project and I click on here and that's, that's how it all begins. And the next step is that they say that you can, they, they provide a simple front end application to communicate with your agent, which is the next steps here. I have gone through these steps and actually created it. You create an XJS project, install the dependencies, of course, we have our API key and everything set up, then create an endpoint and create a simple UI, which I've done, and everything's here. If you download it from my Patreon, you'll still already be ready. And then you just go into the folder and run command npm run dev, folder being the voice folder in this case, if whatever the app name you gave to your Next.js project, pretty much. So that's that's pretty much it. I can actually show you the Next.js app as well. Let me CD into it. So now you run npm run dev. I did have issues with it, uh, and they do say that this agent platform is very in its early phases. So when you run this, it's going to start at localhost. And it looks very simple. 
you will see here in a moment. Next.js projects take a moment to start. Okay, this is it. It just says this connect right up here. And if we click on it, we'll connect to, we'll, we'll have to have our server running as well. Of course, let me run the command uh, right here. So if you if you have your server running, your Python file, then your Next.js project can connect to it. Then you click connect. Hello there. Let's see if this works. You. Uh, how, how, how do you do? Hello, you there? Okay, I actually just it responded to me, but then nothing happens. So. So anyway, just I just wanted to show you that this is how you do it. I get, you know I'm sure they'll improve it, uh, but this doesn't the next JS app very well. But nevertheless, let's take a look at code. So here's the eleven labs code. Essentially, the only thing that changes so they provide all of this for you, and here you can insert whatever you want. You are a helpful assistant. This is the prompt, system prompt. And then this right here, uh, what the assistant says when it connects. So you, when you connect to it, whether you're on the playground, you wait until the assistant says this, and now you can continue. But all the configurations are set here. This is Celero, uh, voice activity detector, deep gram, speech to text, open AI as the large language model, which uses GPT-4 Omni by default, and that 11 labs takes the speech. This is how it works, and this, but uh, I, I'm telling you, Eleven Labs costs a lot because I think it actually transcribes more than what you hear, especially if you're doing a lot of interruptions. Anyway, OpenAI works better for me. The only caveat is that you do have to modify this. Oh, sorry, you do have to have this step because OpenAI does not support streaming text to speech. You do have to initiate the streaming adapter. And you can select the voice here, which are, I selected Noah. But OpenAI has multiple voices, which you can test. The sun rises in the east. Hello, in the Apple. heart of the city, there is a. I, I chose Noah. This is where you set the voice. And then a sentence tokenizer. Here, uh, I, I modified the. To show you that this uh, voice activity detector, if you go, if you control click on it, actually has some settings like mean speaking duration, mean silence duration, padding durations. You can actually modify those, but you have to do this little step. Uh, so then you can pass these uh, stream uh, you know, parameters onto here and change it if you like. Okay, but it's by default, for example, the mean silence duration is 0 0.8. Here I set this to 1.2 and, and also, uh, when we are defining the assistant with the voice assistant, if you control click on voice assistant, there are some settings here as well. I just wanted to illustrate that you can actually define those here. Other than that, you say voice activity detector is voice activity detector, speech to text is deep gram, this is the large language model, text to speech, that's it. And here you set the uh, system message. And then here you set what the agent starts to talk with you with. So this is it in a nutshell. I think this is worth exploring. I just wanted to share this with you. Like I said, these files will be available in my Patreon for free if you want to download it. Otherwise, you know, all the documentation is pretty straightforward. They also have plugins and stuff. You can check those out as well. It's livekit.io if you want to visit their website and take a look. You know, it's good to get familiarized with these types of stuff. Uh, as you can see, OpenAI uses LiveKit to deliver voice to millions of ChatGPT users. If OpenAI chose this, then these guys must be pretty good. I just wanted to let you know about this. I hope you like it, and I'll see you in the next video. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I, what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.